Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. In today's episode, this is basically going to be kind of part three of the haul for the Enterprise. Shorter video, we're going to get uh, the new paint on for the um, Measure 11 that we wanted, and we're going to do a ton of weathering, and I'm basically going to show you how I go about that. Probably going to be a little bit of a shorter video. I've run out of time for work this week. I've got a really busy June, and so it was either like, get this much done and put the video up or wait forever for the next part. So I'm, I'm going to share what I've done so far. Uh, thank you for all the Patreons. I appreciate you over there on patreon.com. Uh, we are working on the final layer of the planking on the Duchess of Kingston. That's great. Thank you to all of you who like and subscribe and watch this video. Really do appreciate all your comments and interactions and hope that you uh, enjoy this build. So with that being said, yeah, let's get into the weathering. Okay, we are back in action. Uh, ships in the spray booth. I've gone ahead and fixed some of the boo-boos. I've put some plates on. Uh, at this point in the war, there were a few explosions up around the bow, and there was a lot of just miscellaneous damage and things like that. Uh, but we've got our paint. It came in. I'm super, super excited about this. This is from Two North, True North Paints, Precision Enamels. This is U.S. Navy, late 1941. 5SC Blue A. It is significantly lighter in color. It's 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 blue. It's it's more blue than um, it. Lo it looks like the box art, and this is the tone that I was going for. Um, and this matches our Measure 11. Uh, basically, this is real close to like the intermediate blue that I used on the Gambira Bay model that I put together. So anyway, uh, we'll get this. Mixed up and uh, start spraying. So as you can see here, it sprays on really, really nice. And this is significantly lighter blue than the uh, navy blue that we had going on before. And I can see why historically the admirals are not happy with this. This is a light blue. Probably worked fine initially but the complaint was it started fading too fast and well both of them faded obviously if this fades it goes kind of towards a gray it's still a dark color this fades you know and the ship becomes really bright which makes it a lot more visible at sea which causes a lot more problems so i see why uh eventually they went away from this and switched to a, a color that looks almost black in comparison but uh, this is my model. I want to do measure 11. This is more true to measure 11, and I'm super happy with it. Um, real quick about the red. Someone's going to ask about that. Although covered in the last video, I'm doing the haul in Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. This is just the red. This stuff, when I bought this can, was extremely expensive because there's kind of a shortage on stuff. Uh, if you go to your local auto parts store, get the duplicate color automotive primer this bottle cost me seven bucks you can see it's significantly larger even though this has got a semi-gloss finish and this is flat the finish is the same uh, this is what you end up with these are these are the same paints as far as i could tell and this is a much better value uh, and then it has a nice spray nozzle on it because it's you know an automotive primer so anyway uh, that is the red haul for the anti-fouling red that i'm using uh, we'll continue spraying here and get back to you when we're all finished up. All right, back in action. We've got some more of our uh, navy puke green going on here. So uh, we got our blue on. I'm pretty happy with it. Did a little initial weathering. And then uh, it's time to put the bootstripe on. So what I've done is I've taken this 3 millimeter thick masking tape and just put a thin line. I didn't want to go a full quarter inch. I think that's too much uh, to get my spacing right. Not going too hardcore with it. Uh, but that is going to give us our gap that we've got here that will run around the ship. I'm going to paint my black bootstripe on here. It's definitely going to get weathered. My plan is to give this a little bit of abuse. Uh, I'm not looking for any kind of like clean job here. I, I want this to be like a ship in action. Uh, 20 battle stars, she, she, she got a few dents. So, uh, yeah, I'll get the black on. We'll peel the paint off. I already know down over here on the other side, I've got to touch up my red on the bottom, which we'll do maybe even just through some weathering. Um, but we'll get the paint off and take a look at it uh, 
Let's see where we're at. Yeah, pressing on. Okay, black line's on. Uh, I know I could fit it. No way I can fit it all in the shot, but we'll start taking some tape off. And here's our blue as it sits for now. Like I said, um, not really any weathering going on. I just did a, like I threw some white paint on in with the blue and hit some of the tops of the uh, panel lines or the panels, sorry, in the center just to lighten the tone up a little bit. But now we can, pardon my reach, now we can get into it here. Okay. Alright, here we go. That looks pretty nice. Okay. Alright, many yards of tape later. There's our boot strap, our boot stripe, and uh, the blue for our measure 11. And I'm much, much happier uh, with this look. This is the color tone that I like. I feel like um, we could do more with it. You can see what's happening here. The, this is historically accurate for measure 11. I understand why it didn't work uh, practically on the ocean, why they changed it. But this is good. In fact, I think you can see maybe in here, I can pick out some of my lighter uh, accents that were done there. So I'm going to go ahead and weather uh, the edge right here. Um, muck this up and get some green and white and algae and things like that going. I'm also going to modify the bow. Right under here I'm going to put a little like a hook, a opening, a hole here, a little connector for the paravane uh, chains. I have several photographs of this ship underway with the chains coming down and wrapping around for the paravanes and it looks really cool. I did it on the Arizona. There's my little bulbous bow. Um, and, and I think it turned out very nice. So I'm happy with that color. We'll start the weathering process and uh, get back to you and press on. All right, back on the bench for the next stage, I wanna begin the weathering process. Uh, personal um, preference here, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna depict this ship Having been at sea for a while and definitely roughed up, uh, I know someone's going to say, that's not how it was, and we, we would never go into port or out to sea or around the sun without the ship looking absolutely perfect. Uh, this is World War II, folks. Photographs indicate otherwise. No one cares about aesthetics during war. It's camouflage, so... There's that, and it's my model. So here's what we're gonna do. I wanna start, we're gonna do most of the weathering initially here at the water line. A lot of this, I don't really care down here, but uh, up along here, we're gonna start. So let's go, so, and, and I did this on purpose. This is a couple of muck ups from my um, priming job, but I'm okay with that. So the blue comes down all the way to and meets the anti-fouling red at the bottom of the black line. So underneath, our bootstripe is the blue, which is great, and I believe that's how they did it. So I'm going to take my a sanding stick, and I'm just ever so lightly here going to scratch my black. Oh, this paint's still a little wet from earlier. And we're going to put some marks in it here. just to remove some of this paint. And it worked a little bit better downstream here. I just had to touch up this paint earlier this morning. There wasn't enough of a line, but you can see right in there. See how we're getting the scratches and the blues coming through. I might have to get a new sanding stick. Just do like this. and so forth. So we'll continue on doing that and that's going to rough that edge up a little bit. Right in here this is fresh paint and it's not 
coming off as nicely. That's all right. Those all need to be the same. There we go. That, that took some chunks off. And I have seen photographs of the waterline scratched similar to this. And then what ends up happening is uh, you see the previous color underneath. Oh, those are good ones right there. That's working out. That was might have been a little too much there that we went through to the white. Uh, but this is good. So then what we'll do, I have started off with a brown violet in my airbrush here. That's the color. What we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll just put some little dots unevenly along the hall here. Because we're going to come back with a mixture of uh, green and white for kind of the algae buildup. And so you can run this along the edge of that ship, or the ship here. And we're going to add rust, little bits of rust to it to make that pop. So you can see we're already starting to weather and get a nice little uh, wear and tear marks along the hall. The blue, that white coming through, I don't like that. I'll touch that up for blue. But uh, for the rest of this, though, we'll just continue. And you're just kind of erratic, not too, not too crazy. We're just going to hug the water line here. And it's real subtle, especially up against the blue. And I, and I like that. And we add, we'll add some rust color to this in a little bit. It really works well with the red underneath. And we'll just continue along like that um, on the hall, and then we'll switch colors here. So I'll come right back in a second as we do that. All right, now that we've got a little bit of uh, the Graubrun applied ground violet i've thrown rust i took the paint out of my airbrush put rust in there but didn't clean in between so we can get a little overlap now the rust color uh needs to be used much more sparingly um especially along the water line there was rust but not a lot now up in here and we'll come back and add some more down the road. This is kind of going to be an evolution in the uh, uh, weathering stage as we as we progress because I'm going to switch to brushes here and do some other colors in a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and add your little marks along the way as we move along the hall. And even up in here, we've got a little bit going on, so we'll just getting real close to the airbrush, adding tiny bits of rust. Just kind of implied uh, is my compressor. And then we will continue on here, putting little dots before we come back with our real mess of uh, our green and white mixture for kind of the algae. But you want to get kind of some multiple colors going and just kind of break up the the evenness of the white line we're not I'm not interested in a, a nice clean water line we're gonna mess all these things up here this is one of the holes for right here sorry one of the holes for the uh, pumps that when the ship was I mean, it's for the bilge pumps, but definitely these things were running hardcore when she'd taken a couple of bomb hits. Um, they had flooding internally, and there's photographs of enormous amounts of water spraying out of these things. It wasn't like, you know, a little trickle or, oh, we're, we're draining some water. I mean, it was like a fire hose. It was amazing how much water was being pumped out by damage control. Get some rust on there to get the situation under control. So anyway, uh, we will continue doing this before our next step, and we'll be right back with you for that. Pressing on. 
So the rust is done. We'll, we'll take a tour along the whole hull here uh, in a bit. I've, I've put some little spots in like there up along uh, just to add a little more dynamic views. This is, this is a little heavier on the uh, starboard side but we'll, we'll end up toning that down. All this, all of this can be sprayed over. Like, like if this is, this one's pretty good here. If this is too much for you, um, we're going to weather this some more, uh, but you can also just take the original color and lightly ghost over it with an airbrush and you're going to fade it and it's going to be nice. So what I want to do now though, is add the grime, uh, the green kind of slimy grime that also kind of appears along the edges of the ship um, it's definitely so i play world of warships quite a bit and it's kind of this this look is what their people have done with the game and i like it i did it on the arizona it turned out nice all right so we're going to take some uh flat white and then i have interior green any any green will work you, you do whatever you whatever you've got and then uh, i take a little plate palette here we're going to mix them up. Uh, here's some white. Here's the green. Just get a stick. Uh, dab a little, whatever you need to do. I, I think mixing in the green, bringing the white over the green is probably better. But you just want to not totally mix it. We definitely want like light green with the interior green and splotches of white. We kind of want all of the colors in an inconsistent mess. Uh, you could probably use a sponge for an applicator. That would that would be cool. I don't. I need to grab some sponges, uh, but I do have kind of a crummy brush. We'll just stick it in there, dab it to thin out the paint, and we will start just going like this. And again, this is something that all can be softened up. Um, and blown over with an airbrush again after the fact especially down here in the red you could go ahead and come back and add colors here and then drag your finger across and zoom out so you get an idea here of what's going on and and I like this look um, I think it adds to the whole aesthetic of the ship for being underway and used and uh you know stuff and again i know oh we'd never come into port like this and we would never we're not in port we're going to be at sea we're at war um get some white in here it you know i'm gonna I got a picture of the Prince George, I think it is, in World War II. I'm going to go ahead and throw that up on the screen here for a minute. Uh, and you tell me. You tell me what I'm looking at there. See what you think. So we'll just continue coming along and applying the green like so. Uh, I don't, I'm sure there would be a lot more under the hull here, too. Um, but on the, on the wire line, but you know, you need some sunlight and this thing's curved down and around. Um, and then for the black bootstripe, you could come back, hit it lightly with your airbrush with uh, some black and, and tone all this down if you want to. But this is all, so what I like to do is just get all these colors on. Okay. Uh, if you're like, oh, no, that was too bright, oh, it was too dark, it's, that's totally fine. Remember, if you screw this all up and you hate it, just mask off and paint the whole thing blue, put your black, put your red on, you're done. It's all gone. Instantaneous recovery. No problem. Oh, i got to adjust my color here. All right. I'm going to go back. It's a little too much there. So just get the color on because this can all be adjusted and dialed back and tone down later after the fact but you got to get the base color on in the first place to even know if you like what you're looking at and let it happen here um, and obviously it's a little contrasty 
And you could come back too and just hit it with um, the Grau Brun over the top of this to dial this back a little bit. Uh, you can use the ship's color, you can use rust. I do tend to think that the green though is on, would be layered on top, right? The algae would be on top of the rust and the brown, all your wear and tear. So, yeah. Anyway, so this is the, the application process that I use that we're going to start off with here. And this is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, don't, feel, don't be afraid to rub it with your finger. And, yeah, just get that grime on there. All right, so we'll continue doing that along our haul line here. As you can see, the further away you get, we're zoomed in really close. And this is all uh, wet and fresh right here. As it starts to dry, it gets better. Um, yeah, I'm happy with this. So let me, let me continue to do this, and we'll move on to, like, streaking and monkeying with the hull some more. Okay, this is where we are at so far, looking just at the starboard side of the ship. And I think that it looks very nice. Uh, the colors are working out. This... This might be a little too intense, and back here, this might be a little too intense. I'll see about it. Like in the green so far, we're good. Now I want to move on to uh, the, the hull of the ship. Now, it already has some slight modulation because I painted it the blue, uh, sea blue, and then I had placed just a few dots of white into the airbrush, mixed it up, and sprayed a very light pass on the middle of a lot of these panels. And that's why there's a subtle uh, modulation. But I want to play with like streaking some wear marks down, and we're going to do this real subtly. So uh, we've, we've got our little mixture here going. So we've got, let's see here. Uh, this is our navy deck blue right here for a darker color, the flat white, and then the uh, sea blue once again, which is you know the base color for this whole thing. So what I'm going to do is end up mixing these a little bit and just kind of running very carefully some lines up and down. Uh, normally you could do this with, it's basically kind of a wash, um, but I'm going to be a little more aggressive with this. So because I'm using the same types of paint, I have to be careful because if I don't like it and I want to thin it, uh, it could rub all of the paint off. Um, but I'm not, I don't know, I'm not too worried. We're going we're gonna to try this. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I've got some thinner standing by, kind of a long straight brush. Uh, I'm just gonna take some blue and the white here initially and, and just really try and mix up a lighter shade like that. I'm not going for a lot of paint. Just, just, just gonna play with this here and we're gonna see if I like what happens. So that's kind of a nice lighter color. And I'll drag my brush through it. Try and load up the brush a little bit. All right. And let's see. Let's just start right in here. I'm just going to drag down. I'm going to try and go straight up and down. I'm not going for any particular spot, maybe just from an edge. Um, what I'm trying to do here is kind of simulate like when water and seawater and stuff rushes over the edge of the ship and it kind of drips down in one spot or another, you know, you just get a change in the tone of the ship's color a little bit, if you will. Let me mix up some more paint. 
definitely going to need a wetter, a wetter brush. And I may just end up dusting over all of this with the sea blue making a light pass. All right, so we're just going to kind of continue along like this and mix in some darker colors. All right, we'll get back to you with the results here. All right, we're back. Uh, I'm going to stay zoomed out over here. Quick pass on starboard side. Got lots and lots of streaks in. Uh, let's move in a little closer. You can see up close. The darker lines were the uh, deck blue lightened up, which worked out really well. So this is pretty dramatic uh, at this point. Not necessarily something that everyone is going to want to do per se, but it adds a lot of life and texture to the ship. So what I want to do now, I'm going to let this dry all for a second, but when we move back, it, it, it really adds a lot. I'm going to put a uh, acrylic clear flat over this. So then I can do like a dot filter with some enamel um, or oil-based paint just to add a little bit more dynamics to this. Let that dry. And then we'll, I'll dust over this a very thin layer of the hull uh, color, the sea blue, to just dial the intensity of the brush strokes back. Right? We don't, it doesn't need to be quite so prevalent. Uh, and then that will work out really nice. Let's look at the other side real quick. All right, here we are on port side. Same same type of thing. A little bit more uh, intense. Have to dial back some of this. This is a little bit bright. Um, no big deal. So, you know, you could do this with dot filtering. I just, I like the way this is starting to come together back here. I think that that's adding a lot of drama and life to the ship. If this was a container ship or something like this, I might be inclined to leave it, uh, but it's not. So <sighs> clear coat and then um, we'll do a dot filter with some oils and then um, we'll dial it all back. Press it on. All right, we've got our uh, flat clear coat on and so now I've dug out my artist's oils. Uh, this is a very inexpensive set I bought a long time ago for $7.99 at Hobby Lobby. It's basic colors. Uh, everything is oil. And you can just put a dot down and mix up a, a filter. I am going to thin everything with uh, linseed oil. This is a typical tool used by artists for uh, thinning oil paint. It does give you a glossy sheen when you're done. Uh, and it will provide a little bit of a medium uh, for potentially adding pastels. Um, again, $6, cheap set. If you take these, they're just like, and I have my sanding stick in here. You just go ahead and uh, hit it with some sandpaper and it'll create a dust from the pastel and then you can glop it on for some rust or grime or whatever you want type of finish. But anyway, uh, the it'll stick to the linseed oil so we can let everything set up and then seal it again I, I have regular washes I just don't sometimes this is more fun basically is what I'm what I'm getting at here so uh, also real quick fun fact about linseed oil if you soak a rag in linseed oil and don't ask me why but you soak the rag in linseed oil and you fold the rag up, you crumple up, and you just leave it, it may spontaneously combust and catch on fire. Uh, I don't know why, but somehow it heats up, and it, it is a danger factor. So just watch out when you clean up with, with this when you're done. Use a paper towel or something. I have messed with paper towels and soaked it in linseed oil and bent it over onto itself, and it, it gets hot. It, there's a chemical reaction. So let me, let me put some uh, colors in here, and we'll start our dot filter process. Okay, here we are at the back of the ship. Uh, I've got uh, black, blue, like a dark red, some green, yellow, and white, and then this is my uh, linseed oil, the thinner. So I've got this nice thought, soft brush. This is going to be my dragging out, thinning 
brush and then I've just grabbed this brush as an applicator. Uh, so what you do for the dot filter, we'll just start right here, you just put some dots of a color down on the ship, like so. And this is just a, I, I'm going really overboard, this is a technique, um, the dot filter thing. You could, I could have just done it on the regular hull, I didn't have to do all these streaks. Uh, so if you have a monochromatic color and you want to just add some variation to it, uh, this is essentially what you do, or a, a method that will add some tone and variation. Um, it's also just kind of an excuse to play, if we're going to be honest. A little up there. Okay. And now we're going to make a big mess. And you can get a rag uh, ready if you want. Let's see. Uh, make sure you guys can see. We're going to get linseed oil in our brush. And I'm going to start going like this. I'll go up and down at first, but eventually all my streaks are going to be down. And we're going to remove 98% of the oil here um, before we're done. And I'm, I'm just going to do this one section on camera. So we're just going to keep thinning it. Keep streaking. Keep thinning the paint. And, and it, you know, absorbs on the brush and it dries up and you got to get more. You can... Dry it off a little bit, grab a little more oil, linseed oil, and continue dragging this down. And it would have been easier if I hadn't sealed everything with a flat coat. I thought about that after the fact. I should have used a gloss coat because that would allow this oil, or we'll go back and forth, to move a little bit more. We're just going to keep going like this. I did this on uh, some submarines that I had built. And man, did it make a big difference. I was really impressed by how much it livened up. Looks got a little hair there. How much it livened up the, the, the black and the red hall sides. Just really... I don't know, it just gave, it gave it a lot of depth that was not there. All right, so let me let me keep going like that, and we'll come back. All right, there's most of the uh, paint and dot filter removed from the ship, and obviously it's super glossy and wet right now, which is fine. Um, there's just lots of little different colors kind of spread in here, uh, and we'll let this dry. And then, like I said, I'm going to come back with the sea blue and coat over all of this when it's done. Well, I'll probably put a flat coat over this to seal it up and then come back just to, with the airbrush real thin, just to dial back the intensity of all these things. And we should have a lot of stuff going on at that point. So I've got the rest of the hull to do just on this side, and then we got to head on over to the port side. So I'm going to continue that, and we'll come back to you when we're done. Pressing on. Okay, we are now back in the spray booth with a big light on things and a very small mixture or thin mixture of our sea blue. And I'm just going to start lightening all these, well, not lightening, I guess that's the wrong word, dialing back the intensity of these tones that we've added earlier. So we're just going to cover this stuff up a little bit. And I know this might seem a little redundant, but now I've got the colors underneath and I've got the detail there and I just want to bring back the intensity it's not so obtuse maybe that's the word right we're just gonna do like so and we can make adjustments as we go uh, and decide what we like so I'm just gonna continue doing that until we have brought this lot back closer much closer to the original color 
um, but we'll have a lot of this variation in there. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll get back to you with when we're done. All right, we're gonna do one more uh, extra thing here real quick in between painting. Uh, I've gone ahead and scraped off a bunch of the bow here and I've made this custom piece from my own imagination out of some styrene, drilled a hole in it. I wanna put the uh, paravane chains through here. And to do that, I need somewhere to secure them to. And I have several reference photos of them being installed while the ship's underway, but I can't find anything for what goes right here. So I just referenced my uh, Arizona model, which has a piece, and I sculpted something that I think looks right, and we're gonna put it on there, and that's gonna look that's going to do the job because this hole in the front here will fit the, the chain through there. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done so far. Okay. I have the light adjust here a little bit, but this is on our starboard side. I've got to fix all of the red down here, but I'm kind of running out of time today. So we're just going to move along with this part of things. You can take a look. I think it turned out pretty good so far. Uh, things are a little bit more intense with the wear and tear over here on port, but I like it and there's always an opportunity to come back and change it and put it back. So I think that looks really good. The next thing I need to do is uh, cover up my portholes right here in the back uh, which just do some styrene sheet because I, I don't want them lit I don't want you to be able to see through there but I needed to drill them out obviously to put um, our uh, hull plating on uh, the only thing I got in mind we'll talk about while we're here is this lip this lip right here the this is where the deck sits in so I need to make sure I stay below that and clear it but I'll, I'll worry about that next time I uh, got some nice light faded areas going on here. Good wear and tear. I like it. Some of you may not care for this look. I think it's awesome. Uh, and the other thing is too, get back there, it's hard to see. It's all just kind of a universal color here. And then I even got a little bit of uh, early rusting stages in up here. On the bow, I think that that looks pretty good. Um, and we'll get our paravane chains running down and around underneath here down the road. Uh, I've got a bunch of pictures of that. I think that's a cool look for a ship, and it looks good uh, underway. I think it makes ship look tough. So anyway, uh, that's all I've got for now. Um, i got to hit the road here for work, but hopefully that you guys enjoyed this quick little basic painting and weathering video. And uh, be safe out there. We'll get back to you.